Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do my wrap up for Latinx book bingo. Uh, I think I might call this one kind of a wash, friends. Uh, I utter, well I didn't utterly fail. I got three out of the five bingo squares on my board that I wanted to get. I could probably technically make it four or five if I wanted to count one book for two categories, but I don't want to do that. That feels a little like cheaty even to my own like self-imposed rules so I'm gonna get to three of the five that I wanted to get to but I did manage to read a bunch of new to me authors a bunch of Latinx fiction and I'm planning on continuing to read a lot of my Latinx fic holds as they come in throughout the month of October so I'm gonna be like keeping going and using probably the bingo board as like a loose guiding principle so I'm gonna call it like a wash because like I said I didn't actually get any bingo but I did read a bunch of stuff that was new to me and a bunch of books a couple of books that will probably actually be in my favorite books of the year list so to go through the things that I did manage to get through one of these I know for a fact that you've already heard me talk about before and that is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore this is the book that I read originally for the bisexual main character square but it is really really awesome magical realism so it would also fit into that sff square this is that book i was talking about that could technically be both but i'm only going to count it for my bisexual main character square this is an absolutely beautiful magical realism book about estrella nomevides who is one of the five olmevides girls they are a family of women born to a family of women generations down and the five only Vidas girls live on La Pradera and are tied to the land in a way that means they can never leave. They're also cursed with the fact that any person that they fall in love with is eventually disappeared or pushed away or dies or is somehow lost. Uh, the five girls all realize that they are in love with one of the women who lives in the house. Her name is Bay. And the five girls decide that they are going to make sacrifices to the land to prevent the curse from finding Bay. Even though they all love her so much, they want to keep her safe. They put their objects into the ground, and what the ground gives them back is this boy. And so what starts to unravel is this relationship between Estrella and this boy that the land has given her. Between the, His name is Fel. We learn more about him as the story goes on but his name is Fel and the history of the land the history of this family and how these two people's histories are intertwined it's sad it's gorgeous it's a book of living history and flowers and covering up ugliness with beauty both in a positive and a really negative way and I just it was I was absolutely fantastic I'm really looking forward to picking up more books by Anna Marie McLemore it was so so beautiful the next book that I read was a non-fiction book I read this book for the on cover representation it's called In the Country We Love by Diane Guerrero. She is, you may recognize her on the cover. She's one of the cast members of Orange is the New Black. Confession, I stopped watching after the prison riot season because of how that season ended. It just really hit me really hard and I didn't have a ton of interest in continuing and I'm not sure if I'll ever go back, but I really, really love Diane's performance. She is one of the two kind of um, Latino women in the prison who are really young. Um, and this is just her story. This is the story of her family and her family's immigration into this country. Uh, Diane is really funny and it can be really hard to write about something like this in a way that is not humorous but finds humor in it and I just really 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 appreciate it. I listened to it on audio and thought it was absolutely fantastic. My library had a pretty long hold for it so it might take a little bit. You might want to go hop in line. If you're looking to pick up more of a modern autobiography on what it's like to be an immigrant in the United States, especially a Latinx immigrant. Uh, speaking of which, I also read this book, which I'm not really counting because not everybody in here is a person of Latin descent, but this is American Like Me, Reflections on Life Between Cultures by America Ferreira, who I absolutely love. She was in the movie Real Women Have Curves, which was one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Also, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. She's in that show Superstore. She went to maybe Columbia? But this is a collection of essays from people who all identify with more than one cultural identity and the writing about that split in themselves and in this country that we live in. So you could probably see from the cover, you, uh, you get people like Kumail Nanjiani, you get people like Gina Rossero, Roxane Gay, Carl Penn, Lin-Manuel Miranda has an essay in here, which is how I was originally alerted to this book's kind of existence. But this is another one that I picked up that um, is kind of like Latinx book bingo adjacent, but doesn't actually fit any of the squares. And then the last square that I managed to fit is another book that's going to go on my absolute favorites of the year list. This is The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Cassetta. 
this was my historical fiction pick because it is the fictionalized account of the 1980s Harlem ball scene in New York and the founding of the House of Extravaganza. This is the story of Angel and her lover Hector and their founding of the House of Extravaganza as well as Venus, Juanito, and Daniel who are the children who make up the House of Extravaganza. I am going to leave a link to Adriana's review of this book down below. They did an absolute fantastic explanation video of like five reasons why you need to pick up this book. This book covers a lot of history and a lot of topics ranging from trans femme identities to sex work to couture, the couture ball scene and living and functioning in the 1980s as a queer trans person. The review that Adriana did is far more articulate and far more knowing than I will ever manage to be and as an own voices reader and reviewer I will leave a link to their review and I really really encourage you to go check it out. This book is gorgeous, this book is sad, this book comes with all of the content warnings but I really 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 think that everybody should pick it up and I also just like as the least thing that matters think that the cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's hard because it has that shiny library cover on it but there's like a rainbow like filter of I just really love this cover and I really really loved this book. Uh, so those are all of the things that I managed to read for actual like Latinx book bingo but like I said I'm planning on continuing through the rest of the month of October picking up whatever it is that still continues to come into my hold list or whatever it is that I can find that is specifically Latinx. I like I said I'm really really hoping to pick up some more books by Anna Marie McLemore depending on what my library has available. I will keep you guys posted of course in future wrap-ups. Let me know down below if you did Latinx book bingo, what you read, what you loved, if you have other recommendations or places for me to go based on these books. Until next time, friends, all my social media is in the down bar. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading.